ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all for uh, coming uh, to our city uh, council special call budget workshop on August 11th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Citizens are encouraged to follow the COVID-19 safety measures provided by the CDC guidelines. This meeting will be open to the public. However, meetings are available to watch on our YouTube channel. Uh, and this, so as I said, this meeting is called to order. Uh, we have Councilman uh, uh, Wiggins, Prater, Griffin, and, and Talbert, and our city uh, administrator, Kent. And we have Chief Dorsey, Jean from the Water Department, <coughs> Esther from Finances, and Pam Cohn is our secretary. Uh, if y'all would please stand for a prayer, please. And be short and sweet. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you do for all of us. We know that we would not have anything without you. We pray, Lord, that doing this financial stuff that we're working on, that everything is done right and people are pleased with it and that we're doing it the right thing. We ask for all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, and one indivisible. Okay. I've already done roll call, so. <sighs> All right, our first thing on the agenda is a uh, so do we have anything from the citizens? Any? Did anybody sign up to say anything? Or okay. All right. And at this time, I'm going to turn this over to Kent Manton, our city administrator, for his presentation. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Just wait a minute here while Pam gets the PowerPoint all loaded up. Um, first off, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who played a part in, in preparing this uh, budget, preparing the budget presentation. Uh, Pam served on the budget committee. Uh, we have Esther served on the budget committee, did a lot of the behind the scenes work, a lot of the work before I even showed up. Uh, Chief Dorsey pulling numbers in, um, making sure we got uh, you know quotes on vehicles. Gene doing the same, running, running every which way to get quotes where he could. Um, also, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Wiggins and Mr. Griffin for their work on the council. Uh, they have, um, on the budget committee, they have been hawks. Um, they have worked with me um, to correct errors to make sure this thing is as accurate as possible and that we're presenting this in a, you know, a very transparent manner. Pam, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that slide, show. Is it high, Pam? Okay, so I'll just start off by saying this is a workshop, so we're not gonna be taking any action today. I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity um, to ask as many questions, uh, to you know, consider some changes to the budget where it is now, what's been proposed. Um, we wanna make sure that we get this right, and I think uh, you know, uh, a lot of opportunities to, to talk it out is important. Also to engage the public and you know, ask for their feedback is an essential part of this. Um, so we'll start off here just talking, uh, you know, we've got uh, our vision statement up there that was um, from a comprehensive plan a few years back. Uh, community committed to promoting cultural, social, economic, and recreational opportunities while maintaining our small town and rural flavor. Um, here you can see um, that we have uh, the breakdown from fiscal year 2021 and 2022. And then um, a few things have changed for 2022-2023. Um, we've got uh, some better distribution amongst our, our budget funds to kind of more accurately reflect where our costs are going. So Pam, if you wouldn't mind hitting that arrow key. Okay, so what does this budget do for 2022-2023? Well, first off, it fully funds our current operations. That's important, right? Uh, we want to continue doing the, the good work that we've been tasked with doing. 
Um, secondly, we're uh, reducing the tax rate here in the city of Bruceville Eddy, or at least that's the proposal. Uh, that would be four cents. We know that our community is facing, just like everybody, the high rising cost of just about everything. And this will, won't provide a whole lot of relief, um, but it will provide a little bit. Um, we also are going to be funding significant improvements and maintenance to our water system. Um, so what does this do? You know, water, water is kind of the key. It, it makes up a big bulk of, of who we are as a, as a city here in Bruceville Eddy. Um, so if we are able to uh, spend the money now to invest in this system, that's going to allow us to, you know, make a little bit of extra revenue down, down the road. We're going to be adding customers. Um, we're going to be, you know, not losing as much water. We're going to have a more efficient tool so our, our staff can get out there and, and fix issues before they get worse. Uh, my mama used to always tell me, and of course she wasn't very good at implementing it, but she used to tell me, you got to spend a little money to make a little money. So I, that one kind of always stuck with me, um, but that's kind of what we're doing with this one. Um, we also are going to be providing a lot of investment in our city streets. Now, I know that we have this sewer moving forward. Um, we're getting closer and closer. However, uh, some of the roads are getting in ill repair. And it was important to the budget committee that we made this priority number one. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And lastly, this allows us to enforce more of our quality of life and safety issues uh, through our hiring of a code enforcement officer full time. Um, and also kind of po poise us for the increased growth that some of these infrastructure upgrades will help out with. If you wouldn't mind hitting that arrow again, Pam. Some of the major budget updates. So what has changed from last year? There's a lot of minor stuff, but the big ones are we're going to be investing in the water system infrastructure, investing in streets. Um, we're also uh, doing our best to retain our current employees and all the institutional knowledge that they carry. Um, so we're proposing a 6% cost of living adjustment. Um, we've also moved the city secretary from the water fund into the general fund to better reflect the actual work that she's been doing. Um, we've invested in a school safety um, resource officer with uh, Bruceville Eddy ISD. Um, like I said earlier, we're going to be splitting the expenditures a little bit better to reflect the costs that, we're, you know, that, that are going on more accurately. Uh, we're increasing the water rates. That's TBD. Right now, um, in, my, in my budget, I've, I've just calculated that we're going to be passing along all the costs that Blue Bonnet has passed on to us. Now, we can discuss as a, as a governing body what we want that to look like. Uh, the increase in garbage rates, that was passed at the last council session. Um, good news on that front, uh, we were able to get them to delay um, their implementation of their increased costs to us. Uh, so that does give us a little bit of savings on what we would have otherwise been eating. Um, vehicle equipment purchases uh, for police and water departments, funding a full-time code enforcement officer slash building inspector, and then um, also reflecting the cost to the sewer system planning that's been ongoing. All right, next one, Pam. Okay, just so you know, I've put that all as a reference on your, on your table there. Uh, this is our current cash balance, unrestricted, in the general fund and water fund. So we're sitting at about five million total. General fund's a little bit better stocked right now compared to the water fund. And that's our outstanding debt down there. Okay, you can go on, Pam. Okay, I just kind of wanted to uh, put a little bit of information about this. This was not a, a really good study, uh, but just so you know, uh, CPI has been tracking about it. You've probably been hearing it in the news quite a bit. Uh, the inflation rate has been significant over the past year or so. Um, so right now we're seeing that all items down there are hovering around 5 to 6 percent. Um, I did kind of look into some other cities, but it was really kind of difficult to ascertain how much other cities are, you know, proposing increases. Um, so I just pulled out 3% um, in Bellmead is what they're proposing across the board uh, pay raises. Now they may have some sort of merit system or something like that that they do. 5.4% um, increase in total employment costs is for Lorena and 34.5% increase in salary costs for Troy. They probably just ended up hiring some other folks. Like I said, this is not a, a very good comparison, but just so you can kind of get a little bit of reference there. Okay, tax rate. Um, so uh, as y'all see from the budget uh, package that I sent you, we are proposing a 46 cent tax rate. That's per $100 of value. That's down four cents. Now, as you know, um, the Texas legislature a few years back uh, enforced some or enacted some new rules on how cities uh, are, you know, proposing these tax rates. 
how much we can actually do in one year and how much uh, we can do before the voters have a say in that. Um, so our no new rev or, I'm sorry, our voter approval rate um, was 46 and some change. So we brought that down to 46 to reflect that and to uh, not have this to go to uh, the public for a vote. Um, however, I, th I think overall it would be a good thing, like I was saying earlier, for the citizens to have a little bit of, of relief um, with all the current increases. Um, as you can see, we've got Robinson is about in the same position as us. They're going from 50 cents to 46 cents. You can see uh, City of McGregor. They've done some shuffling with their debt, I believe. I didn't study it a whole lot, um, but that's why they're able to keep that rate um, pretty similar to their, what, what they were having last year. But it is a trend right now that with all these appraisals going up about 13% or so um, that we had to, that everybody's kind of having to come down on that tax rate. All right, you want to move on? Uh, so here's our timeline um, that I'm, I'm proposing. Uh, I went over it with the mayor to make sure that we're meeting all of our, you know, statutory requirements and getting this budget approved. Today we're on the 11th. This is our first budget workshop. Um, if you all deem necessary, we can have another bu budget workshop before our regular session on August 25th. On tw August 25th, we'll approve the proposed tax rate. Um, that will be sent off to the tax office to publish uh, a uh, notice in the paper. And then on September 8th, we will hold a public hearing for the budget and tax rate and either approve both of those or at least defer the budget on that one. Okay, now we're kind of moving on. Do I have any questions or anything like that at this point? No? Okay. So moving forward, these are some of the budget proposals that were brought up uh, for our budget committee. So I just wanted to provide some visual visualizations so you know what we're talking about. So we'll kind of speed through these real quick. I know you all have seen them ahead of time. Uh, we're proposing water meter upgrades. Uh, so the budget committee um, on this one uh, decided to go ahead and just spin this out of this year's funding. So I'll be bringing that to you at the August regular session. Um, what this does is these are about these are our nine remaining meters that are not smart meters, correct? Um, so right now, we installed one recently out at uh, Green Family Camp, and we realized, uh, oh, that one wasn't working real well. So getting these out there will allow us to properly track revenue. So they're basically going to pay for themselves is what we're expecting. You can turn the slide on that one. Um, also, the Budget Committee uh, decided that we should go ahead and move forward with a new mower this fiscal year. Um, we've got some quotes ranging from about 12000 to about 16000 uh, from two di different vendors at this point. Um, but what we're proposing here is to go ahead and just buy that new mower and then sell the Kubota in next fiscal year. And we'll use those costs to defer or uh, to offset what we spent on this one. Okay, street repairs. So I know it's not a whole lot, but this will allow us to focus and target some street areas that will be brought before the, before the council, brought before public. Uh, they can give us uh, some guidance on which streets need to be repaired, and we can go out and, and check on prices and about how much that's gonna cost. Um, this is a significant increase from what we had budgeted last year. Last year was $6,000. Um, this year, current year to date, we're around 12,000 or so, right, Esther? Something like that. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Might happen again, though, just so you know. Okay, next one. New payment solution. Uh, we had a meeting on this one from a vendor yesterday, and this cost is probably not gonna be needed. Uh, right now, the way the, the vendors are, are moving towards, moving on this front is they're just wanting to offer the software um, no cost for implementation at all, and they're just going to be passing that fee off to the customer, which is kind of what our current vendor is already doing, right? Uh, but this one uh, would potentially result in some increased efficiencies for staff and um, also reduce the overall cost that customers are paying, which is a good thing. Next one, water tank cleaning. Uh, this is something that hadn't been touched in a year or so. Um, the last report that we got had uh, about $30,000 worth of work that needed to be done uh, for clearing out our storage tanks, uh, removing silt, uh, a few minor repairs for the most part. Um, but what we're proposing here is just to kind of get this into the budget each and every year. And so we're going to be targeting um, some of our more priority um, storage units. Uh, we selected these based on the need, based on the silt coverage level for the, for the unit, but also um, how much capacity that they have, how much you know, 
good work are we going to be doing on this one? Uh, next one here is excavator and vehicles. Um, so these excavators are running about $50,000. Um, this was uh, one of the priorities from the budget committee, um, and uh, it was brought to us by staff as a need. Um, now, what this allows us to do is this allows us to transport. Yes, ma'am. No, uh, and I'm sorry about that. My bad. I forgot to include that one in there. I did. My fault. Um, so this one here, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more lightweight, so it can go on the back of a regular flatbed trailer. It can be uh, towed around on a, on a regular truck versus the dually for the most part. Um, it's also smaller. It can get in. We can put a smaller bucket on it. We can, uh, you know, dig smaller holes at a much faster rate and get that soil uh, spillage back in once we're done with the job. Uh, we're also proposing a, uh, the purchase of a used vehicle um, for the water department, although we have some citizens who are working with us right now to maybe find some free ones from surplus, uh, military surplus that is. So hopefully if everything goes well with that, we may not have to pay anything out of pocket for a, a new used truck. Um, but this one here, we're just you know estimating about $18,000 for that one. And then if you move on, a little bit later on, we'll talk about the utility bed. Um, this is where we're going to be doing a lot of our spending for the water fund. So this is water system line upgrades. So this is that um, CRLF funding um, that we have taken in last year and that we'll be getting another check for this month. Um, now, originally, we had had this on the revenue side on the general fund. That's not where it was supposed to be. We had a keen eye that noticed this, and that's why I had to do some reshuffling with our, our revenue um, accounting. Um, so on this one here, uh, we've got about $300,000 dedicated to next year's budget. Um, there's a, quite a few hoops that we still have to jump through, and so I'm guessing that we won't use all of the $410,000 that, uh, that we are getting as an award. All right, if you want to move on. Um, so this is the funding of a utility bed. This is going to allow just our, our staff in the field to be a little bit more efficient. We, uh, the budget committee's recommendation was to put this on a new used vehicle. There's no sense in putting this on a vehicle that's already on its last leg. Um, but going forward, it's kind of the idea to go ahead and try to get some of these vehicles replaced on a yearly basis if they're in need. Groundwater well. Um, so with some of our, that CRLF funding, um, we'd like to design and uh, look at the feasibility of getting a groundwater well uh, out in the Falls County area. And that's really being done because there's a water source available right now, and we don't know if, uh, if changes in the state and users are gonna affect our ability to secure this water source in the future. So going ahead and doing our due diligence, uh, getting the information about whether or not it's gonna be, um, you know, cost of, cost appropriate for us, um, I think is a smart move to make right now. Okay, so the budget committee on this one um, decided uh, that at this time it probably wouldn't be a good idea to go with, uh, uh, with a playground. Um, we did uh, discuss and consider that one, um, mostly because right now residents can go over to the school right across the street. Um, this one here, you know, it is something that we could look into doing. There are some grants available to purchase the playground equipment. However, as a project, I know for me and staff, this one's gonna require a lot of effort. Um, we probably could get some volunteer labor out here to install a, you know, a soft bed or something like that as the groundwork, get all this assembled. I think they would send out a, um, I think they called it like a supervisor from their company that would kind of help lead the volunteers, but there'd be a lot of hours invested in that one. But on the, on the other end of that one, it is a highly visible project that the public gets to see on that side. Uh, parking lot paving, we did discuss this one for City Hall, um, getting that gravel um, fixed up. Um, right now, this is something that we're wanting to defer, defer to a future budget just because um, you know, it's got a high cost and it's got uh, a, only a little bit a benefit. Um, mostly, that would be to city staff. Okay. And I think that wraps it all up. I've got a lot of pictures of the different vehicles and everything on here because I thought that would be something that we would uh, discuss today. So if needed, we can talk about which vehicles go on where and uh, what all we have in our, our current fleet. So any questions at this point? If not, I'll go back to the table so we can discuss. Good to go. All right. Thank you all.
kind of hard at that. He's he's really been working hard, typing, getting it all together. We tried to keep his door shut, but <laughs> he's been working at it, and he's been working real hard with Esther and Pam and getting all of his stuff together and stuff. So he's been, we've all been working pretty hard at it. Um, okay, number three. Um, well, you, uh, budget and tax rate, we've already went through that. Um, council to discuss and consider, consider the proposal of a 2022-2023 budget and tax rate. Yes, sir. Councilman Talbert. I want to thank the people that works hard on this. Yes. Because I got a lot of years experience doing this. Yes, sir. And I know how tough it was. Yes, sir. I know the parking They own the speaker. You want to go now? Get that mic a little closer to you, sir. Thank I you. I said the committee split up more fairly all of the costs to the city and split it more evenly amongst the departments. Yes, sir. I was pleased with that. I was pleased with uh, much of the future planning and recognizing the things that was important to this community and growth. Overall, I think you've done the best you could under the circumstances. Now, I'm just a businessman. And things are more expensive to all of us. Amen. And I'm probably going to get a hard time about this, but that's okay. And I'm not opposed to what's presented. Are you going to take my raise away from me? Take what? No, I'm sorry. I'm just a joke. I'm sorry. No, that may be part of it, too. You know, <laughs> our cost to the city continues to go up like everybody else. Oh, yes. For insurance, retirement, fuel, vehicles, pay raises. Everything. Uh, it's sort of kind of hard to go against an old account as conservative thinking so many years. Once you cut something, it's always hard to get it back. Yes. But I understand it. Uh, but those are basically the few things I said. I thought you'd done as a whole the best you could. And uh, thanks to the committee and the council and uh, Mr. Matt and everybody that worked so hard on it. I know what it is. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So uh, the council has discussed and consider uh, the uh, proposal. If anybody else wants to add anything to say about that? Especially looking to the future, that's what it's great. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wiggins, Council Wiggins. Yes, ma'am. Just to reiterate some, I mean, uh, the water meter upgrade, uh, I, I think it's going to be to our benefit to go ahead and do all of them. That oh, yes, sir. Talked about. Is it 10 of them? Or nine, 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 I believe. Nine. Nine. nine, is that right? Yeah. And most of those are at the school, aren't they? Well, it's, it's the two-inch, well, inch and a half and larger meters that we didn't change. Okay. Which I think all we got left now are two-inch. Because I'm not going to go shut the water off over there in session. True. We're going to work with the school and the TV station. That's a two-inch meter, but it's up for sale. So yeah. I don't want to set that meter in the ground, but I'll have it on the shelf. So when they ready. do sell, we're ready to go. Yes, sir. That way, if they go up, we've already got it. Okay. Uh, Councilman Talbert. The property has oh, been yeah. sold. Okay. So. But. You know, Somebody comes to the city and says something, you know. Yeah, which we, we, have, we have not heard. <laughs> We've got the three inch meter right across the street here. Uh -huh. And I went over with Ben the other day at the school. They have a leak. The meter in front of the administration building goes to four or five different buildings over there. One being the old gym. Nobody's been in <coughs> all summer. Toilet running. Oh, and my I was able to pull a graph on it and show Mr. Kilgore. Where the where the bill is on it, so they're looking forward to getting these meters in. Also, <laughs> even though I'm preparing them for a speaker shop, if that meter hadn't been reading accurate, then you know I could show them a graph on it. Where now it's like, yeah, this is the water you use. That's what it's showing me. Yeah. You know, with a graph, we can 
pinpoint. Yeah, yeah better yeah. show them. Yeah. And uh, that's okay. the reason for doing it. We've been through that with them before on the football field many years ago. And that's the one I want to get changed too, because you know, that football field's been there in 10 years, mm-hmm. something like that, that new gym, and that measure's been in there since. So it's probably about time to upgrade that gym. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you, Gene. Uh, okay. One lady Excellent. we went out. Praise her. That one lady we went out, you was able to tell what time she went to the bathroom. Yeah. B- by the flush of her toilet. He said, I guarantee you, y'all get up around 12 o'clock and use the restroom. She goes, yeah. And he seen it on the graph. I was like, yeah. Yeah. I was impressed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I they pay for it. They pay for it. That'll help the school know how much water they're using on yeah. their football field, yeah. when they're watering them. And right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Mr. Wiggin, Council and, Wiggins? And then, uh, well, this is kind of kind of like go through these again, and and then on uh, the mower, the mower and the uh, water meter upgrade, those nine meters will be done in this budget. This budget year, year. yes right. sir. This well, that's kind of clear. Yes sir. I do have a question on the mower. Okay, I, yes sir. Uh, it's it's saying that maybe uh, when we get this, then we sell the old one and auction or something. Is there any way, do we have any benefit that we might be able to donate it to the Little League? That mower, that mower has been in the shop more times than I can count. And I can probably get the amount that we spend on every, that makes So it would be better off than just giving them a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, got I got you. I was just saying if it's out Because, there. you know, it may, we, last time they mowed over there, Well, then I'll get on it, or somebody else will get on it. Like today, they were mowing, did good. But and we take it to the shop. And it says grass in the gas tank. What kind of mower? What's the engine in it? I don't remember what engine is on it. Probably got like six foot two. But uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's the axle yeah. so was it, bad on it. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to give them a problem. Like no, that. yeah, yeah. They I got, don't I got that. I'm just saying if it's out there, yeah. we can no. utilize it somewhere else. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. They, 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 they say no. Those are the two things that are on this year's budget. Right. And everything and else year's I budget. think is on next uh, year's next year's budget. And on the tank cleaning. Yes, sir. Uh I know you had up there you had the it was two West Ridge tanks, is that what you had up there? Yes, sir, that's correct. And then a Ford tank. What about the friendly oaks? I know uh, that was on one of the yeah, it was up there also. Yes, sir, it is on the list. Um, you know, like I, like I was saying earlier, I was just trying to focus in on the ones that I, that, you know, me, Gene, and the, the, the folks getting the quotes thought would be the most priority. The two we, big ones at West Ridge, that's where the big ones are. Um, yeah. yeah, yes, sir. And I think the reason we did the way it is now, the Spring Oaks has got two, two tanks on it. Right. One may have so much sediment, but the other one is not as The yeah. one behind my house is probably well. That's a fairly new one, so it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, and they and all of them have some silt in them. Okay, well that's you know, that's the that's no deal. But as far as the coverage on them and stuff, yeah, they did recommend the worst two was Friendly Oak, the big tank, and West Ridge Elevated. So two, uh, the two Friendly three. Oaks. They three. said which one's the worst now? I think they said. The uh, and the quote that he sent was Friendly Oaks, yeah. Big Tank, and West Ridge Elevated, I believe. So, uh, so that's the third one is uh, Friendly Oaks? West Ridge Tower, yeah. West Ridge Tower. And Friendly Oaks, the large. Right. Yeah. Yes, because that's the one that... That they, they recommend cleaning first, those yeah. two. And now this year we didn't include Friendly Oaks. Yeah, the 
friendly oak ground was a half million. Right. And the other way is two fifty. But if you go to and and I kinda I, I see where both sides are coming from. They say the worst one here and worst one here. But if you look at the scope of it, we're getting towards mileage, it's at the other. Friendly Oaks is over here, West Creek's over here, two totally different ends of town. You know, I would Three of these in this year's budget, or all, the, this all this of year. these are in next year's budget. Yes, 22, 23. And, okay. and the one there in is two West Ridge and which other one? Yes, sir, the Ford Elevator. Ford Elevator, okay. Right. The two is, is West Ridge is 750,000 gallons. That's a lot of water. Yeah. Lots. So I'm like, Jim, if you're going to do the one out there, you need to do it for both. Yeah, do all the things. That's and the good is. thing is there's and one. Ford. They're talking to make it clean them in service. Yeah. So. yeah. And then on the utility bed, where well, we had the excavator, and you said it was about 49,000. What size ex excavator is that? Do they have different sizes, horsepower? Yeah, the Is that rubber tire or steel tire? Trash. 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 Is that Mr. Big Oh, Mr. Young, look at it. If not, I can bring it out by the way. Yeah, that way we can walk around. There's lots of used ones of those out there. Okay. They, I talked to the salesman talking. <laughs> Yes, that's right. And gasoline, not diesel. Uh, uh, and, and if I believe that half a ton was, it'd be better gas mileage and, and pull the lawnmower trailer and things of that nature for what we want to pull it for. We're not going to be pulling it thousand miles. Main thing is if it needs, sometimes you just got to pull it. Yeah, yeah. And then we can put that utility bed on there. I don't know if, if this price is, have, is that us putting the utility bed on or do we know? I don't know. Uh, I think that's the yeah, that's the that's them put it on. With installation. Oh, okay. yeah. Where do they do that at? Probably a truck outfit would be somewhere else. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I bet you all that kind of stuff. Is yeah, that this the utility bed for them too? Yeah, this, uh, this excavator, y'all said we had two buckets. Did it come with two buckets? Oh, what size was the bucket? Well, so, this one says 12 inch, but there's only one bucket on there that I can see. I don't know if it's other page. Yeah, but yeah, 12 inch is small. I mean, you do a lot of times you get 18 or 24. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all said it came with two buckets, but I only see the one on there. That's a 12 inch, and that's pretty small. Yeah. Probably made a 24 on there. Well, well, I don't know what they We'll have to wait for Jim gets back in. Yeah, he'll be back in in just yeah, a minute. He should print that out. Okay, this is a, must be 12 inches. Yeah, that's right. No, they that's can't hardly get the, can't hardly get the whole work on the line with that. Mm -hmm. But you gotta know what the horsepower is to run a 24 inch bucket. 18 might be okay, but a 24 is gonna take some horsepower. So what if we use the bucket we have on the Just so 
absorbing that, I understand. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it also has an expanded track, so it'll like, keep you going through a narrow opening. So and that the track if will it don't, slide out. If it don't come with the two buckets, how much are the 20 or 40 buckets cost? Is that? That's where it wouldn't even hold. And if it would even uh, hold a, a 20 quart, then it also fills in there. Yeah. And uh, for that size, because, I mean, it takes, you go from 12 inch to double the, If I get into a, a oh, rock bucket, yeah. we're going to need a backup. Right, but the backup. Do we have a 12-inch in there? No. That's going to give you much room in the hole. Well, there. mainly what I want it for. Well, you can dig it out either way. Caps and, uh, you know, small poly leaks and putting in caps and stuff. Yeah, but you know we dig it wider with the thing. Right. Bucket. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about the caps. Well, we're not using it on... Uh, not like a install big... Back up once you cut it. Yeah. yeah. And may, maybe it'll help pay for the 
offset the water and going up on the trash, yeah. you know, yeah. and the only reason we're going up on the trash is because they went up on us. Right. The same thing with the water. The same thing same with the water. water. Blue bonnet went up on us. So all we're doing is going up that amount trying to that's get our money back and cash it up. That's right. And actually the tax rate that we're, we're still going to have more income. That's correct. Yes, that's about a little, little over 17 dollars probably than all the public use. Right. Used to. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so I think everything, I mean, I looked at it in detail. I know, man, we met and everybody did a work together and, and did a great job. We sure did. And, uh, everybody did. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, nobody could complain about this. And, and uh, I, I'm just so proud of our employees, Kent. You know, the first time here, he steps up to the plate, steps in here, puts all this together. We've never seen anything like no. that. No. And Esther uh, did an excellent job, and so did Pam, and Gene, and the chief. Everybody stepped in and, and came together as a team, and, and I think it was to Miss, our Mayor, Miss Owens. Everybody did a great job. The thing is, you said you met and worked together? Yes. I tried to get up here that last day. I was here at 820. And y'all was already in here, and I come back by at 10 to 5, and y'all wasn't broke up then. So that was a yeah. marathon. Did that, did we that, have a marathon. Oh, uh, yeah. You want to talk about working? Yeah, I saw you. Yeah. And Esther's the yeah. money person, so I'm proud of her as well. Yeah, oh, don't hurt. Good. Don't hurt. Yeah. Eighteen years. Yeah, yeah. Esther, you've done such a good job. We're gonna let you take off to have that baby. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as you, it's not very long. As long as, as, long as you, <laughs> as long as you, can, <laughs> as long as, as delivery bed in that office. <laughs> for sure. As long as you I, come back, <laughs> Esther. Did you hear me? I said, as long as you come back. He's coming. He's coming back. I, know. I already know that, yeah. but I want to tell her yeah. face to face. Yeah, uh, and and you know we talked about uh, selling the for the vehicles which which uh, Kent had on the table today about selling that Ram, and that's that that's that one we had that work on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know Richard said that would be a good thing to do. Is get rid of it, Carly, not to drive it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, one, that, that's, that Richard, that's one. Richard, that's one. That's that 2010 on. Dooley that we had that head job done on. Uh -huh. And when then that 2007, that's the one that's got the really 250,000 miles. They tried to sneak yeah. a bill in on it. Yeah, I know they did. Awesome. I thought I heard. I should have hired you to fix it. We I can't are, do it. Hey, I can't do it no more. Okay. <laughs> Gene, Gene, Gene go ahead. Home, I mean It'd be real expensive, wouldn't it? Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Go ahead, Gene. The dump truck that we that was bought, you know, by yeah, it's not the junk. water people, but city people, you know, you know, uh, old administrators and stuff. It was leaking oil when we bought it. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So that thing, if you put three backhoe buckets in it, you're full. That's not a dump truck. Yeah, I can't. I could save the city money if we had a real dump truck by getting our own materials, but we don't. So nonetheless, well, I, yeah, I, knew, I, knew, I knew see that. The hey, dump truck trailer, the back of trailer that needs the axle, uh -huh. well, that's sitting out there doing nothing for me. What's that new yep. in the back of So we, we've got some time. Let's kind of go through our current fleet real quick, and let's discuss some of that. Um, so right here, uh, Pam, if you will, just start at the beginning. These are all the police vehicles that we have. Now you know that we have two vehicles on the way. So if you'll slowly kind of go through these. I think it's got a delay too, doesn't it? Okay, so this is our newest unit here. And you can kind of keep going. Unit number two. Still in good condition. You've got all the recommendations there on your vehicle master list. So this one right here, if you will stop real quick, Pam. So this one here is the one that uh, Chief Dorsey is wanting to tag for the code enforcement vehicle. Right now our code enforcer is using a temporary vehicle, which I'll show you here in a, a minute. Pam, if you will, just move forward. 
Unit four, still in good condition. We'll keep that one. Number five, still in good condition, keeping that one. Okay, so this is that uh, temporary code enforcement vehicle. This is the one we're proposing for city admin to use. Uh, right now, when we do have to go to meetings and stuff like that, or supply runs, we're using our personal vehicles, requesting mileage reimbursement for that. This would just allow us to make runs as needed. Uh, of course, anybody in the city who still needs it, if public works gets into a pinch, if police gets into a pinch, uh, code enforcement doesn't have a vehicle, we can always use this for that. Good to have a spare. This one here is the one that um, council voted back in March to send this unit to uh, VFD because they lost their command vehicle. So that we, this one we'd be phasing out. These are the two new vehicles that are coming our way eventually. Okay, and next one... Go ahead. All right, oh, for the water, we're going to be, our proposal here is to sell quite a few pieces of equipment here, and we're going to phase that into our, our, our budget mostly for this next coming fiscal year, but also for 2023 and 2024. Um, so this one here is the brand new one we just got. It's going to be in service, use as needed, but mostly it's just going to be parked and used for the backhoe. This one here, 2015 Ram. Keep this one service. Good to go. Sounds like a plan. All right, next one. Okay, 2011 Ford. This one's still kicking. We'll keep that in service. 2011 Ford 250. Keep it in service. Still working. International dump truck. Okay, so this is a unit that's just kind of be sitting there. Uh, Gene's talked about this one. I say let's just go ahead and auction it while it still has a little bit of value left in it. Um, and, and we'll kind of rope all these together and, and work with the vendor to get these off to auction. Of course, all this is gonna come before council for final approvals on this. Um, but hopefully we could use some proceeds for that to offset our, our equipment purchases and vehicle purchases. Oh, okay. So it's still around, it's still working on this one. So I messed this one up. So we need to keep this one, you think, still? Okay. So yeah, if you would make some notes on it. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I misunderstood that one. So if you would just update your, your list on that and I'll fix that on my end. Oh, really? Oh, oh good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, that one didn't come across well. We got a R backhoe, a caterpillar, a caterpillar. <laughs> Um, so this one's uh, good to go. We'll keep that in service. 1985 uh, trailer here. This one needs to go to auction as well. The axles broke on it, right, Gene?
But I mean, if you can put a set of wheels on it, it's sell more. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That may be worth a piece of the yeah. panel to be able to sell. But yeah. it's been yeah. an 85 yeah. mile. Been at that step I, mean, I couldn't say yeah. what. You got extra time for projects. We'll take it. Uh, well, it looks like my PowerPoint didn't filter over correctly. Okay, so the maintenance department on this one. So this is the dually uh, that council would like to see sold. Uh, this one here is going to fetch a lot more money is what we're thinking, Gene. So um, we're going to rope this in to buying another vehicle in 2023, 2024. Now, whether that's used or new, we'll discuss that then. Uh, but we will get it sold uh, in this coming budget year. 2007 Chevy. This is the one we were just discussing. Um, if you want to check your master list there, it's got the amount of miles. Uh, Gene probably knows it by heart. 192,000. Yeah, well, 192,000. Yeah, it's got 245 on that sheet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can see from your little cheat sheets that this we would be selling our, our maintenance fleet here. Um, but Gene was saying, for all intents and purposes, everybody goes out and kind of works these jobs together. So they'll be under the water department, but they'll be used for both. Sounds good. Okay, so in the maintenance, we've got some equipment. That's the Kubota that we're proposing sell. Hustler's still working good. We'll keep that around. Yes, sir. Yep, takes up time. Okay, you can go. I think we got a few more. Tractor's still doing good. We'll keep that around. One thing I see about the tractor is it should be enclosed. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a nice upgrade, yeah. And this should be the last slide here. This is the trailer used to pull the backhoe. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Right. Uh, is there any more questions for uh, Council no. Lee? Okay, I'd, I'd like to hear from uh, from Pat. 
Pam and, and uh, Jane and, and Esther and Sue, are they in the group with uh, all of this? Do you have any more extra or more suggestions or something like that? Group with? No, I'm, I'm good with it. If y'all need any more pictures or literature on any of this equipment that I've presented or whatever this holler, or I'll see what I can do to be. Yeah. Sell it and get a few bucks. Right. $55. Yeah. Junk on. Okay. Yeah, I've Didn't got know it. they bring it, but right now. Well, yeah, I wonder what we'll work on that. Get, you know, okay. get somebody here that's going to do the auction or whatever, right. and we'll get everything lined out. Well, yeah. Richard said something about an auction, and he knows exactly. Yeah, that's Saturday. I just went to the Fisher Clark auction. That's the biggest auction around here. Clark auction? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they, they have a big, they every three months. Well, I just bought an air compressor from uh, one that they have for the city of uh, uh, Clifton and the city of Hewitt. Hewitt uses them also. Okay. So uh, they do it all the time. Most of them are uh, online auctions. Okay. But good. them saying you bring more money than a live auction. Yeah. <laughs> I was mad because every time you, I'd wait till the last second and get, else to get, get a bid on it, and it automatically throw two minutes on it. Uh, <coughs> the other people would do it. So I usually <coughs> I, I don't think because they don't have a permission. Or I, they may have a, a small permission, but the yeah. most of it is a uh, is uh, the people they're buying. Like I, I, online, you have to pay a fifteen percent. Oh, I've never seen one. Whatever you buy, like that. Me, you can put there's, there's a new lot technology. of vendors, you know, long yeah. Long Well, that'd be what I'd check to when you got time in the book. I don't know if you, you got so much going on right now. Uh, <laughs> anyone else you have any busy. questions? Oh, on the uh, on that chipper, how much do we have to fix that? For? Fix what? Well, I mean, I mean, how much? I chipper? thought the chipper. Oh, okay. How much I money? Thought we had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought about wanting to get it in the shop and just you know take it apart and see what they do. He said because he's back. He said you just need the belt. We need, Calvin, we need to see if I can get a belt and check the blades on it. Okay. Another battery, right? Uh, we battery, just pulled it out of another truck. Battery, battery I'm going to take it out of the picture because uh, that's what we do. Well, how picture. much you bring? How much you think you bring? Oh, we're going to keep what, what, it. Oh, what, what I propose is this. We're going we're to keep it. Well, I thought you were talking about selling it. No, no, no. no not, not the chipper. They, you know, a lot of times they get a lot of... Uh, Brush brought up, well, I know, I, and you can put it in that chip. Well, they're having public service with people, you know, but well, I didn't know what he was talking about. I don't oh, know. yes. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was I talking want, about that. I want to open a day, if y'all don't know what I'm already trying to do, I want to open a day like Trash Day where people can't burn now, but everybody's well, got brush, brush, so they can just bring the brush up there. If it takes it, I'll sit up there. And, That's and, good. And do it. But, uh, you know, but I know a neighbor of mine, he had a bunch of trees right. he cut up. Yeah, but I mean, it's, good so, it's uh, something that the citizens can use, and I think it'd help our city too. And Maybe with the code well, enforcement now, he could probably. And he we need to look at it because a lot of that when we chipped before, it was too big for you people using for oh, fire okay. and stuff. Yeah. So and that could be all in the way the blades are adjusted or yeah. the blades on it. So I mean, that'd be some way to look at. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I know a neighbor of mine went. And he had a bunch of them. He cut down his head to go to town or Waco Central somewhere and get a rent a chipper. You know, I mean, he lives in Sea Lane, yeah. so I mean. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to be a better service. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be better for the city. Right. Good. Any other questions? No, ma'am. Not for All me. All right. Does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn, or do we need to do that, or just to do adjourn? Uh, you got a motion okay, there? I got a motion down there. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Griffin I'll made a motion, it. and Mr. Talbert second. Amen. This meeting is adjourned. Richard, thank you. Thank you, everyone. At three o'clock, took one hour. Yeah, good job. Y'all did awesome. Yeah, good job.